Arrow Season 3, Episode 11, Midnight City. This was definitely a really great episode. I love this one even more than I love the last one. And once again, my favorite part is watching everyone kind of deal with Oliver not being in the city, wondering, you know, how much can we help and how long can we really help for without the guy who started all of this and with us having the ability to help other people but not being nearly as great as Oliver was as the Arrow. That was such a great component of this episode and it worked in several different ways. There were a couple of different moments where it was like, you know, it's weighing on everybody. Like, we don't have Oliver. He's not coming back. You know, at this point, they, of course, think that they've kind of accepted it and tried to move on. Some people, you know, like Felicity decided it's not going to work without Oliver and we can't do this. So she had quit. And with Diggle and Roy, it was like, we kind of have to just keep going with the two of us. And of course, in this episode, we got to see Laurel kind of doing her thing, um, kind of full on Black Canary. And it was a really good episode. I personally enjoyed it. Um, another great thing they did with Laurel as Black Canary was kind of bringing her down. Like, you know, her getting into the Black Canary thing, I know with her having been like, you know, she was kind of destined to be Black Canary from the beginning. Everyone kind of had an issue, like, everyone loved Sarah as a character. She was an awesome character, she was really cool, she was, you know, she was a cool fighter, she had a cool backstory and stuff, and everything about her character was really sweet, so her having died off and kind of leading into the, you know, comic book Black Canary, it was kind of disappointing for people, especially with the fact that a lot of people kind of hated Laurel for just most of the series. I personally liked her character, I... <clears throat> I never had an issue with her. I actually enjoyed the stuff she did when she was kind of like on drugs and drinking. I thought that was actually pretty good for her character. I, you know, it sucked, of course. That sucks when it happens. I thought it was a good storyline, though. I thought it was interesting that she was on this insane downward spiral. I actually enjoyed that. I didn't think it was like her being a crappy character or whining about this or that. I was just her not being able to handle stuff, and she went to, you know, drugs and alcohol, so... You know, I've always enjoyed, like, the crazy storyline she's had. And I liked it in this episode. It was really fun to watch her be Canary, but she wasn't just, like, you know, instantly badass Canary. She beat up the one guy in the last episode who she caught by surprise with, like, you know, sonic ear-piercing grenades, and then she just hit him, you know, two times and knocked the guy out. And in this one, the first guy she faces off against, she can't beat. She gets cut. And Roy st steps in and saves her. The second time they fight, um, she's not able to take on Brick, which, you know, no one really can until Oliver comes in, of course. But, you know, she couldn't take him on. Um, even when she jumped on the car, which really made me laugh out loud, like, she dropped on the car and just went like, oh, and just fell right over. I thought that was hilarious because it didn't, admittedly to me, it didn't really make any sense that she would just fall right over. Like, she got her arm cut. It wasn't like she like had her leg sprained or something like that and she just fell right over i thought that looked really silly and just i thought it was a bit extra but it was really funny and her as well as roy really losing uh one of the aldermen was like an an amazing scene in this episode it's probably my favorite part because laurel being black canary it's kind of the typical thing when someone wants to be a hero and it's like you know it seems like it's moving too fast they have to have that moment where they screw up, and Laurel had two in this episode, and the first was her being saved by Roy, and the second one was for both her and Roy, where they actually saw someone get killed, and they couldn't save that person, and for Roy, I don't really know if it's worse for him or not, I mean, he was the one who, technically, he was kind of the one who got Brick to do that, because he hit him with the arrow, and that made him mad, and he shot the guy and just tossed him out the truck. But I thought that was a great scene. It was like it affected both of them for sure. And of course, uh, I mentioned this in the last episode. I love getting to see a lot more of Roy because he is currently the Arrow character. You know, in Starling City, there is no Green Arrow right now. It's just Red Arrow or Arsenal. So it was really cool to see him do that. And of course, we got Diggle in this episode again. And they kind of just have to figure out this weird balance. Like we're a team still, but we're we, you know we've admittedly lost like our leader basically and it destroys you know the rest of the team who you know hasn't lived on a crazy island fighting super soldiers and hasn't had to kill like one of their best friends off on the not only on a boat but had to fight him and defeat him from destroying the entire city and then 
you know, all this extra stuff, they don't have that training, they don't have these experiences, and Diggle would be, like, the closest, uh, of course, to Oliver, but it's still not the same thing, and they didn't have that passion, they didn't have the drive to just come back home and save the city from all this crazy stuff that was happening, so it was, once again, really, really great to see them just work as a team without the leader and wonder, like, how long do we help for, how can we really help well, you know, are we strong enough to even help? We gotta get killed today. So I love that. I thought it was really cool. Um, I love the scene with um, the alderman first being taken. I thought that was an interesting scene. It was like, you got like a cop and two vigilantes. Or like, you know, you got Laurel who wants to kind of really step into the Black Canary role. And then you have Palmer who wants to become Adam and stuff. So it was, that was an interesting scene. Like just all the people in that room were doing doing something very important for this series, so I actually enjoyed that. Um, and Ray basically being helped out, I thought that was pretty cool, and Felicity deciding it's not really about us just helping because we like this person or we like that person. It's helping because there are other people that we care about, even though you know we don't really know them, and if we do know them, then we want to help them, not because you know, they care about us, but because we care about them, you know, and that's the important part. So I really enjoyed that, and Felicity coming back into things, and them just working together at the end. And that was a really cool scene when um, Roy and Laurel went into, like, the little facility. They beat up a bunch of people. Then they had they took on break, and Laurel, like, just jumps out the window and stuff. I thought that was a cool scene. We also got some great stuff with Oliver that I really enjoyed, especially the flashback stuff I thought was pretty cool in this one. Uh, the little bar fight, I thought was really sweet because we got to see a cool fight scene. And I always love those when we get to see really cool fight scenes from flashbacks because it's never Oliver as Arrow where it's like, okay, we kind of know what to expect. When Oliver is Arrow, he's going to shoot a bow, he'll have some spins and stuff, and he'll kind of he'll use his bow as a weapon. You can expect certain tactics because he he's used to fighting that way, and that's what we'll see if he has the bow with him. He would be stupid not to use it. So there's certain things we can expect, but in the flashbacks, it's before he really uses you know the bow and arrow all the time. So we get to see him do silly stuff. Well, not exactly silly, but you know, different stuff, and it's really fun to see that. And like in this one, uh, we got a nice, cool little fight, and you know it's just like a three-way fight. They're running out of the club and stuff, and you know he like jumps on the bar and slides across like his Max Payne or something, and he like shoots a guy, and they just take off. I thought that was a really cool little scene, and uh, the present stuff when they had to deal with the League of Assassins, I thought that was pretty cool as well, and um, I believe his, no, I think his friend's wife's name is um, Masao, and I can't remember his name, but it was cool to see him really take up for Oliver and say like, hey, you know, he, he basically kept his oath from when he helped him save his wife, so I thought that was really cool, and he even cut his own neck and killed the guys off to save, you know, Oliver and his wife. And one of the big things that happened in this episode was them mentioning how they aren't really in contact anymore. It's like, okay, they split up. We still don't know where their son is, so the first thing I thought was, we were, I thought we were going to see it in the flashbacks, and we might see it in the next episode, which, because I'm a week behind, I, you know, I'll get to see that a little bit sooner. So, they, we don't know where their son is right now. And I have to assume that China White came in and she killed their son off, and that's why he's basically with the League of Assassins. He left his wife because he felt like he was the one that basically caused that entire situation. It wasn't just, oh, it happened, and that really sucks. He feels responsible in some way that we just haven't seen yet because his wife was like, you know, I still love you no matter what you think you've become. And that's a huge thing to say to someone because it's really clear that she still feels the same way for him, but he doesn't feel the same way about himself. So I'm excited to see, you know, what happened. Unfortunately, I do really think it's going to be the fact that they lost their son, which really sucks. But, you know, we don't see him. And, you know, what else can really cause someone to change so drastically? And, of course, she's there, so, you know, why not with their son? So it's kind of, it kind of all leads to one thing, unfortunately, but... I think that's what we're going to see, and China White's going to come back at them, and, you know, that's kind of going to be the case, but I love this episode. I know the next episode, um, Oliver's supposed to be coming back, so I'm excited for that. 
it looks like a crazy all-out war is going to be happening in the streets like the season 2 finale or something. So it should be interesting. Uh, the character break is definitely pretty cool as a villain. I'm liking him. Basically, he took over the glades. He got all the, He's going to get all the cops out of there because he has all the info on a bunch of government officials and stuff. So I love him as a villain. He's really interesting. I always like that actor. He always... I mean, it's, you know, that guy, so he does always end up playing, like, just that type of character who can just beat up everybody, but, hey, it makes sense. He's a good actor, he works perfectly, and he is an interesting villain. I do like him as a character, and I'm kind of excited to see how Oliver does take this guy on with, you know, his skills and his speed over, you know, of course, brute strength, because he's kind of faced that challenge before, and I'm sure he's faced it way more than we've actually seen in the show so far, but... I'm excited for that. Love the episode, of course. I want to know what you guys thought, so please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts. Um, this may have already been answered if you have already seen the next episode, but what do you guys think is going to happen with Laurel and basically with the rest of the team dealing with Oliver's death? Like, before he does officially come back, which I have to assume isn't going to be till like, the end of the episode, because that's kind of how every return is. But what do you guys think is going to happen? They kind of had the first episode where they had to deal with it. This episode, they were moving on from the initial shock. Like, do we accept it? Do we not accept it? So they did that in the last episode. And then this one, they were kind of working through it. And they even worked through it better than they probably even expected and officially came together again as a team at the end. So... You know, in the next episode, before Oliver comes back, they're going to kind of be in the third stage of things. Like, we've... You know, it was like, it was kind of like, you know, the seven stages of um, grief, I believe. I don't really remember. But, you know, they had to accept it, and they've kind of done all that, and so now they're kind of towards the end. But what exactly do you think it's going to be like before Oliver just, you know, basically swoops in and makes everything happy? Because I'm excited to see it. Before he comes back, I want to see them as a well-oiled machine that has accepted that they've lost someone really important to them. And then, of course, when he comes back in, they'll be an even more epic team because it's like, we were doing great, or we were doing good at least. We were able to work together as a team without you. But now, you know, we kind of got our leader back. It's going to be even cooler, and they'll be an even greater team. But, like I said, I want to know what you guys think. So please, comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching.